guys, it's Jake. Welcome back. On today's episode, I've got something a little bit different for you. We're going to have a look at a race. It's actually a race that I invented. We've been running it for about two years on the Swift calendar. It's a sprint series race. And what's different about it is that it's only scored on your fastest through the segment on four scored primes. So that can be a sprint, a, short, a very short KOM, or a combination of the two. And your finish time means literally nothing. So you could roll over the line in last place on the road, and it means nothing. It's 100 points per segment, so your maximum score is 400. Now at Snow We Ride, this is a team event, so we have protected riders in each category. We have allocated lead outs, including myself, who will coordinate the sprint, try to look after our protected sprinters as best we can, keep them out of the wind, get them up to speed, and then launch them at the right time. So we're gonna have a look at that today, and we're gonna see sort of the tactics that we employ, how we get up to speed on a lead out, and how we look after our riders. So let's have a look at this one. We're gonna jump into the pen, speak to our team, and have a look at some tactics. Hello, friends. Hello, Jake and Bates. Howdy. Right, so just to level with you, I've told my YouTube channel already, but I'm gonna vlog this one. So no slagging off any of the teams, no swearing, no abuse, anything like that. But if you do, I can always edit it out. And that's assuming it goes well. If we do really badly, I'll just bin it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cheating. We can still verbally abuse you though, right? Already? Just not the other teams? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Same as every week. Patrick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, Patrick, uh, uh, new, new Wave Patrick, have you got a uh, recording going on this one for the Discord end of it? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. This is the future now. We can have a Discord audio on the recordings. So what's the, uh, what's the plan? Well, looking at the numbers, it's pretty much 50-50. ATP, at last count half an hour ago, ATP had fi uh, 16 signed up and Snow had 16 signed up, so it's pretty much dead heat. So I suggest we do our own thing. Uh, and I think to do that, we wait in the pen for a minute, and then we go. So that's the plan, that's the plan this week. Uh, it's the sprints first, the two sprints first. So we'll do those, obviously, it's pretty routine. Then you've got Libby Hill. So it's, it's Richmond UCI, so it's 16K. You've got the two sprints, and then you've got Libby Hill, and then you've got 23rd Street. Com, which is a uphill sprint of about 20 seconds as well. We'll stop after every sprint, right? Yep, stop after every sprint. Patrick, what's the distance of the first sprint again, please? Uh, it was... It's four. 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 4.1, yeah. 4.1's the first one. Okay, so we've got plenty of time to group up, but we'll wait in the pen for a minute. So please don't roll out. Also, it's going to be two flat sprints. So yep, your aero setup's the best for that. Something like uh, Cervelo Disc 2020. So die cut wheels, always a good shout. And then for the for Libby Hill, Tron isn't a bad shout, but there's a, I can't remember what the lightweight setup is. Does anyone remember that that's good for it? That's Mike, Mike the legendary Mike Ellington, captain of my TTT team. At the race Is it okay that I changed to an e-bike? <laughs> e-bike? <laughs> yeah, just don't tell the race organiser, I won't tell him if you won't. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> All right, hold it. Okay, I've just uh, inadvertently rolled out. No, no, hold it for a minute. Yeah, yeah I've rolled out a few metres, so don't, don't, don't pedal, don't pedal, it's all good. I'm just, don't go further than me. Well, I did the same thing. That's just like, uh, like involuntary. Just, just, just testing. <laughs> I just heard the chime, and then when it got down to zero, I just instinctively started pedaling, even though we discussed not doing that a hundred times. <laughs> well, just checking who's paying attention, you know, if that's all. Making sure everybody's on the ball. Get the focus ready. Looks like everybody else has rolled out, including, including ATP. I'll behave myself this time. Whenever you tell us to go, Jake, we'll go. Cool, as soon as we hit 16, we'll roll out on my clock. I, don't, I haven't got a time for you. I can't give you a 10-second shout-out. As soon as we hit 16, I'll call it and we'll 
roll out at the usual 1.5 to 2.0. There we go, 16, let's roll out please. Group up together. And so because there's no, there's no sort of uh, point in bothering on your energy for finishing placing on this, we roll between the segments as easy as possible to conserve as much energy as you can, and then you go as hard as you can on the segments. That's the most efficient way to do this race. Okay, everybody, so my position is 75. <laughs> 0.1, let's roll out. This is unlike any other race on Swift, that's for sure. <laughs> Rolling out the pen at 1.5 after a minute. I'm liking it so far. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot easier than ZRL, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like ZRL, but without the threshold between the empathy. Yeah. <laughs> Jake, as I said, 2.0 is, is two. It's too hard for me to keep it. I'm already behind. I mean, I'm only doing 1.5 like that. I'm not doing any more than that yet. Tom, Tommy, can you do me a favour and drop back to Layla, please? Oh, yeah. I'll wait him for it. Okay, thanks. I want to group up sooner rather than later, though. Remember, if it's at 4. Point, what did we say? 4.1, 4.2? 4.1. 4.1, okay, so we need to be ramping up yeah. to 3.1. You, know you know the drill. Oh. Same as every same as every sprint. Sprint to the after the hairpin, Jake. Uh, okay, yeah, I know that one. Thanks, Josh. Perfect. It's like a hundred meters after the hairpin, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, yeah, we know that one. So you're going to have to be really going as we go around the bend, to be honest, guys. If you're going for the fastest, yeah. Uh, remember, protected guys at the back of the group. If you're not a protected rider, you need to fill the gap between me and the protected riders. So me and coach will be on the front. We'll be holding the pace that we're calling out on Discord, and I need everybody else to just fill the gaps between and the protected riders to sit at the back of the block. Does that make sense? So your energy, a lot, of, a lot of the energy of the protected riders will be chasing the, holding the wheel of me or coach, just plugging those gaps. And remember, this one is going to be about entry speed, so I know it's going to be a bit difficult in the for the, for the lower cap riders and the build up, but it's, it's, it's going to be much more efficient for everybody that way. So stay at the front, ladies. Yeah. yeah, ladies are probably sitting in the front of the group, and that way they can draft people as they come past. Hi, Jake. Can you hear me? Hey, Shirley. What do you want me to do for you? Can you plug the gaps between, on this one, can you plug the gaps between me and coach, and then everybody else? And what I'm guessing is you'll come past me and coach as we wrap the sprint up, as we go around the bend. Okay. okay. And then on the climbs, what we'll do on the climbs is I'm going to give people the best leaps on the climbs to help them. Okay, and what we'll do is, as you know, we, when we go through the, uh, the 1k to go marker, so to speak, at 3.1, we'll ramp it up to 3.0 on the front and we'll steadily increase that pace gradually to the build-up. Now, does the, the sprint starts at 4.1, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you can see yeah. it pretty clearly. Yeah, okay, good. Well, we're going to need that full k to ramp up, I think, on this one. Uh, and we'll, we'll try and hold it steady. But you know how it goes. In the last 500 metres, we'll be ramping it up, four, five, six, etc. Yeah, you're better to go, again, this is the same as all sprints, really. You're better to go too early than too late. You need to be at full speed as you're going across that start green line, uh, green starting line. But it's just too late. How long is the sprint in seconds, roughly? This one, anybody remember? 13, 13 to 14 for the top, I believe, maybe okay, 12. Okay, yes, it's, it's, it's about two, 220 metres, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Quite yeah. sure. Okay, 220 metres, about 13 seconds. Through a roundabout, and that'll be a straightaway, and then the hairpin, and we go. Okay, everybody knows this one, right? Is anybody not? Can anybody not visualize it? Okay, so if you can visualize it, you know the bend we're talking about, and you need to be going as hard as you can there, really. Just sort of at least as we go around it, not before it, but as you go around it, you got to launch it there. Do we want to okay. experience the lane a little bit? Like a bit like snow. Yeah, as long as we don't get any gaps. So the lead outs need to make sure that they're plugging those gaps for the protected riders. Because any gaps is inefficient. Gaps of more than five metres in the gap in the uh, in the lead out is not good. Okay, Jay, we're going. Okay, yep, okay, yeah, so we're running a bit up to three please on the front. The group looks like they're a bit strung out behind me. So yeah, they are a bit strung out. Yeah. Everybody push up. I don't want anybody more than five metres away or anybody else. At the push, and an absolute push, you want to be as close, you want no meters.
Okay, guys, you're going to have to ramp it a bit here. Here's the bend. Here's the bend. So get ready. Okay, go. Okay, go, go. Go on, Josh. Come to him. How do you count? Yes. Oh, no. Great work. Great. Okay, stop here. Everybody stop. Stop pedaling. Recovery time. Go to the pair of minions if you need to. I'm going to move up a little bit. Don't come past me. Yeah, look like some good times there in A. Well done, Patrick. Well done, Dazza. What I will say is, there was a little bit of a gap there. I think it's because we had the ladies into the second layer. And uh, people didn't come past me and uh, Patrick Carney again until pretty late. So I want this time to be really tight. Really, really tight. The really good ones. The interest will be good. good. In C, in C, like the top two. What's that? We got the top three, or they did? Nothing we did. Ben first, me second, and third. Excellent, can't have so much more than that. How do we get on in B? Josh, Josh was first. Perfect. Got fourth. Yeah. And D? Fifth. Thanks, Silas. D? <laughs> Perfect. perfect. That was Eight. absolutely perfect for me, guys. So, I'm third. I was first a female. I'm third of yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that's still really good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just, just go fast. I'm not going to yeah. beat him. So third is, I think, not my second do. The thing about sprinting as well is, you can't beat everybody. There's always going to be somebody faster. And you can just only get it as good as you can get it, and we've got to be happy with it. Third's still a really good result. You're still winning the series overall at the minute, so I don't think you're in any yeah, danger. You just keep, 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 racking, keep racking up points like that, and we'll be good. Okay, well, do we do what we did last time, then, which is how we counted it last time, which is you guys go a bit further up ahead? Yeah, yeah I tried that. to just jump on when you're closing up. We did that in... Uh, Lettuce Express last week and it worked, so should we try it again? I'd like to. Okay, so what we'll do is get another minute or two's rest. There's no need to, to rush off. Get your energy back, get your recovery back. We'll send the ladies off. The ladies that want to go up ahead, off 30 seconds ahead of us. And that way we can uh, hold the gap. What distance is the next sprint, Patrick? It's exactly like three, three kilometers, 7.6, somewhere in there. Okay, so it's not long at all then. So before no. you know it, we'll be on the ramp up. So we'll need to edge up. So what I want, what I want everyone to do, first and foremost, is edge up to me now uh, before we set off. We've got another, at least another two or three minutes before we set off. But I want you to edge up to me so that we're all setting off from the exact same point. I know it seems really OCD and really anal, but when there's 3K and we've got to launch it with 1K, and we're trying to send people a little bit further up and coordinate that as well. We have to be together as we, look, as we start. So let's do that. Patrick, 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 sent, Patrick sent pictures in. Patrick did the recon for us. Patrick, you, do you tell us what's going on here? Patrick, Patrick, Patrick Hallstrom, over to you. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I had my <laughs> mic muted. But, uh, yeah, the finish is where the right, uh, road turns right. And it starts uh, on one of the crossroads that is boarded up, or, you know, there's a road that comes from the side. 
But we'll start the ramp up at seven point six, and then the sprint starts at seven. Uh, sorry, six point six, and the sprint starts at seven point six. Okay, should we roll out then? Okay, roll it out. Got two k till we sort of start ramping it, basically. Remember, I want no gaps, team. Matheson's with us again. He helped the other week. Maybe somebody reach out to him. Hi, hi, Captain. I'll check him out. He was really useful uh, in, uh, I think it was, I don't think it was last week. Maybe it was. But he was a really good lead out. Okay, 500 metres till we start ramping. You can see the series of turns we're talking about on the minimap. The ATP is waiting for you again. Okay, don't worry about them. <laughs> don't worry about them, just keep tight. Ladies, you'll probably be the ones that suffer here if anyone does. Because you're already spread out. So keep tight. No gaps. Okay, go start increasing the pace here. Not much. <laughs> Passing ATP at 6.9. Okay. So you see a right hander? It's very interesting. See a right hander? Hey guys. I'll start thinking about it pretty shortly. Ladies, we're coming. We'll just 600 meters from here. Guys, we're very spread out. Really need to group that up quick. Thank you for coming. I gave you one job. Come on, tighten up. There's the line you've got to go down. Then. There's the line you've got to go now. Go now, go now, go now. Go on, Josh. Come on, guys. Come on, faster. Oh, no. No, no, no. ATP whooped you then. Stop here. Stop here. Oh, crispy me. Guys, I'm going to watch that back on the stream and I'm not, I'm not happy about that. I'm so hard. Stop here. I'm not killing myself on the front of your ATP lead out. If they jump on our train and it's going fine, great. Yes, well, when we have to look like that. Yeah, that wasn't good. That simply wasn't good enough. I know I'm moaning, but I said the same thing last week and we had a big chat about it afterwards. Thank we you. One big, one big instruction there, which was to close the gaps. And the gaps behind me and Coach were just, in Patrick, were absolutely gargantuan. Yeah, I'm not complaining, but I was using the rear view camera that time to try to get a better idea of what I was. And I don't know, man. It's really confusing. I'm mean, gonna have to watch it back because I'm very, I'm very frustrated that this keeps happening and somebody's obviously doing something they shouldn't be doing. So I'm gonna watch it back. If you, if you know it's you, stop doing it. It's simple. I gotta close gaps. Don't make me call you out on it. <laughs> somebody, oh, yeah. somebody, somebody's letting wheels go to hold their own chances in the sprint. And there's really, there's two people that we're trying to protect here. For the, for the majority of that, of that group that was just coming through then with me. And that's the other thing. When Jake says we're starting, we are. Oh. 
it's just the, the little things, guys. I know we're moaning at you, but it's the stuff that's easy to get right. No one's not saying you're not doing a great job in the sprint and putting down the watts. So if you're going to go to the energy of putting down watts, why aren't we going to, you know, why are we going to get the fastest time for it? Why are we going to let the easy things slow us down? That's why it's frustrating, because you're all absolute killers on the watts per kilo for a minute. So where does the, uh, where's the climb stop? Well, it's going to be... Like, like, 12 foot, but okay, so you know this one, guys, don't you? Nibby Hill. It's as hard as you can go. Yeah. Really. It's, it's good, yeah, I mean, we, it depends what time we're going to be aiming for in the uh, in, in the leaderboard. I've got a feeling Steve D'Alessandro is going to do some sort of insane time again that we won't be able to compete with. So I suggest we just pace ourselves in A. And I think Patrick, really, <laughs> you're not going to like it, but you've got to be going between 9 and 10. Up there. It's only a minute. It's only one minute. Um, we'll, we'll pace you up it. I suggest we have. I suggest we have uh, a lead out per rider. So it's going to be again like the approach speed is actually useful on this one because the base of it's not actually very steep. So you're going to need still a bit of. Uh, when I I've actually done this. Um, segment before and done higher watts per kilo solo to a, a rider that was in a group and set a slower time because it's just about you know entry speed and draft as well is quite important until the upper slopes where it gets really steep so we're going to have to try and get, use a bit of pace on the front as we're approaching it but really once you get there it's going to be the protected riders go as hard as they can and you're either going to be helping a protected rider which we'll figure out in a second who needs help or you're going to be trying to steal points for uh, for someone else in another category, if you know what I mean. So, like in in, in A, we'll be trying to beat Nurse Daniel. Uh, you know, Darren will be trying to beat Nurse Daniel, for example, uh, and Tommy. I can see ATP is uh, standing in the like the sharp hairpin right before that, so they are waiting for us. They will okay. surely mess up the like. Uh, Trying to, to keep up with uh, with your lead you know, out rider. Yeah, fun and games though. That's part of the part all part of the tactics. We can't blame them for that. I would probably do the same thing if uh, I was looking at the stronger team. But what what I think uh, we, we do is we we tighten it up. Like I said before on the last one, we try and get tight. If ATP try and jump in or on us, okay, we can't do anything about that. What we can do is keep it ourselves as tight as possible, as efficient as possible, and maximising what we're doing for each other. So I want it tight. When we hit to the bottom of the descent, it's going to come apart anyway. So I wouldn't worry about ATP then. You can probably use some of them, to be honest. You know, just be a big blob up. Just be a big blob at the top, won't it? Yeah, so yeah. The, the difficult part's going to be the lead into the segment, making sure ATP don't disrupt us there. And as long as we're tight, I think we'll be okay. So people call it out. On the front, it is difficult to see. I'm looking at just meter markers behind me. So... You look after each other, call it out if we can. I know we can't do too much once it starts, but just try not let ATP get in, in between you, because that's what they'll be trying to do. They'll be trying to disrupt our rhythm, slow us down, and get in between us. And they did a good job of it last time, but now we know they're going to do it again. So we'll just tighten cool. it. In. Okay. Okay, ready to go? Everybody feel good? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, let's do this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we won't really start even the ramp up to the guys on the front. Um, until, you know, I said we'll take that left turn and there's about 600 meter descent. We'll start it on as, as we go around that bend. Ride ons from Colin. Where's you? Yeah, where is he? Now remember ATP will be doing their thing, so we just need to be tight. As we take the switch back, I want to start ramping it. And you can see the right bend, that's where the comm starts. So tighten up here. ATP look like they've gone. Don't worry about them. Tighten up, tighten up, tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. Tighten up. We're going too slow, guys. Tighten up. What's going on? All right, Jamie. Follow me, Jamie. Come on, go, go, go. Everything you got, slow. 
Yeah. Going home with a whale is what we should have. Here we go, Layla. Come on, push. Push, Layla. Push on to my whale, Layla. Come on, Jamie. Come on, Jamie. Come on, Jamie. There you go. He didn't have the legs today. Only nine men for the minute. About 60 watts off the PB there. 50 maybe. I don't find him 50 watts. Anyone just play the whiff for me? That was a PR for me, I'm pretty sure. Oh, nice team. Good work, my, wife, my wife just came upstairs to check on me. She heard me puking. <laughs> That's perhaps more detail than we needed to know. Yeah, I like to share. <laughs> At least I muted beforehand. Hey, listen, if I'm calling for guys, I don't know they're giving it their all. I'm happy to know that. Makes me happy. I will never give you less than I got. <laughs> Do you think we took one and two? Let's see. It's the same for the lead out, Josh. They'll kill themselves for you as well. We're all, yes, we're all, give, all giving it as much as we can. Everybody's killing it for the team. Good work, you overtook me. You overtook me on the start line, and I never got near him again. I feel we were a little bit slow on the leading. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we need to be aware. 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 Because it's about, it, like I said before, it's not. It, you can do a thousand watts on a ten percent. It ain't much different to eight hundred watts on a ten percent. You're still on ten percent, and you got you're going at six or five kph. You you know the lead in, going in, hitting the base like comma fifty kph or forty is a massive difference. So it really is uh, about getting the speed up before we get into it. And I'm going to say it again, you made me shout at you guys. The big gaps opened up there that shouldn't have been. So we're going to have to have a look back at it afterwards. I know, it's, I know it's hard, you've got the minute you're thinking about, but I don't know how many, how many other ways I can shout it. Is it not benefit for somebody like me and maybe Chris in terms of, I'm, I'm not a strong timer like that, to be further up so that when they back up, we can talk about it. So, uh, there you go. It's about, this is what we're saying, the, your, your slingshot effect at eight kilometers an hour is non-existent. It's the speed entering the base of the climb. Yep. There's no draft yeah. at eight kph. The draft stops at 17, 18 kph. So if you're going slower than that, you're not helping anybody. It's just psychological. So when we're, when we're on the upper slopes and it's, seven, it's six, 6 kph or whatever it is, nobody's helping anybody. 
it's just psychological. The way you can help them is how fast they're getting to the bottom of that climb versus how, far, how fast they're going up the bottom of it. That makes a tremendous difference. It's like all sprints, yeah. really. But this one is more, more, more pronounced on the climbs. And KLMs like this, I have to try and chase the ace as long as I can and just go until I die. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's about draft speed, really. It's, again, so, I know it's weird for the, for the lower cat riders who are going, I'm hanging on the threshold here, I haven't got a sprint. But, like, it's still going to be faster. Try and go solo and do your max sprint and tell me what the difference is. I guarantee you it's going to be 15 quite seconds. Massive. 15 second difference. Huge, huge difference. So I know it feels like you're hurting yourself more and you've got nothing left, but that's still way faster than going so low and going as hard as you can when you hit the line. I, I, get, I, so, I agree with Chris. Chris yeah, Northrop yeah. is yeah. when he said that Josh overtook takes us straight to the start, and we're not providing any lead up. I mean, we're too slow in that respect. We should have been much further ahead. Well, exactly, ahead. Because that's, that's where I'm saying to you, close the gaps. So when, so, you, when there's a 13 metre gap behind me and you and Chris are there, that's where you're needed. And again, like Chris said on this one, what I was just saying about this last climb is even more important on this one because it's shorter and it's steeper and the descent is more pronounced. It's literally the dynamics and the physics we just said are even more important now. So when people, your faster guys are going to shoot past the base of the climb and that's kind of what we want. What we need the, everybody else to do is to plug the gaps between the front and them to save them plugging the gaps and using some energy that they'll need later up the climb. That's kind of the whole idea. So, yeah. Try and just keep as close as you can. Oh, you, can take, you, can, you can take another minute or two if you want, guys, because this is going to be sheer, sheer aggression. Yes, please. The, top guys, the top guys are doing this in 20 seconds. It's going to be sheer raw power watts aggression when we hit the base of the climb. Um, so okay, this, 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 this sprint. The, the fact it's uphill is irrelevant. It's all about every speed, and then it's, it's, it's a 20 second sprint. Do you know what I'd also recommend here is if you're not much of a climber and you don't like um, steeper gradients, take your trainer difficulty down to zero or 10% or something because it's going to be easier than changing because of the descent it goes really steep down around the corner and then straight up again that's going to be really tricky changing gear right so i would personally take my trainer difficulty down pick a gear wind it up on the descent and then boom you're already in your gear as you hit the bottom of the climb you don't have to change gears halfway up because it gets so steep you don't have to change gears at the bottom because you're going into your sprint gear it, to me, it makes more sense. But it's personal preference. It's whatever you prefer. If you're somebody that already doesn't like steeper gradients and you're just a 20-second sprinter, just like Chris said, this is just a 20-second sprint. <laughs> so you can just take the train, train difficulty down and make it a flat 20-second sprint if you want to. Your call. Cool. So, okay. Do you want to put Say that again, sorry. I said, does Dan, does Dan want me to lead him out for cut six? No, 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 sprint. no. I don't want any of that. No, no, no. No, you just go just, for it. Uh, you just do what you can. Go, go, go this, one, you can. this one is just blob up. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You won't have to. Yeah, there's no, there's, no, there's no domestics on the climb. It's just going to be sheer balls to the wall watts. So your Chris's, Silas's, Patrick's, uh, Carney's, Jake's um, of this world are going to be Tommy's of this world, are going to be Simon Stromberg's of this world, are just going to be getting the blob going as fast as you can and, and keeping the blob together. So if you see a gap open up three metres, that's your job to close it if you're one of those people. And it's the riders at the back of the blob. So you're going to get the riders at the back of the blob to the base of that climb as blobbed up as you can. That's your job. And we're going to have to do it pretty fast. We're going to have to accelerate pretty much as soon as we, um, we set off. Right, because it's going to be needing to get up to speed. This one's all about the speed you are at the bottom of the climb, as we just said repeatedly. So we're going to have to drill it on the descent. So your your your, your lead outs your lead outs are still going to have a job here, and that's going to be go hard on the descent and keep the gaps together. Right, no, Alison, no, Steve, no, Alison, Steve, Alessandro just did it at twenty point five. I'm sure people have done this one in nineteen before. So it's been. Uh, yeah, I think you can, Josh. I think you will. This is where this is where you, this is where you stick it to him. And if you're off the back of the group as we go over the top, you're not coming back. Yep. You, if you let a gap open up, that, that gap's not coming back together. And anybody behind you is fucked. So you've screwed yourself and everybody behind you. So do not let any gaps open up. Use your energy to close them. Even if it's part of your sprint energy, you will thank me that later. Yep. Okay, make sure you pedal in. Coach, you've gone off pretty hard there. Yeah, too hard. You went off at five. 
Okay, go for from me. Everybody tighten up here. Tighten up on me right now. Right now, tighten up. Close the gaps if you're not. If you're a protected rider to the back, if you're not, close those gaps to me right now. Okay, good, good, good. Start ramping. Guys, you've got to start ramping. Make sure no gaps. Josh is coming past. Go, go, go. Come on, guys. Everything you've got to say, come on, boom, boom, boom. You gotta start ramping. Make sure no gaps. Josh is coming past. Go, go, go. Go on, guys. Everything you got slow. Come on, boom, boom, boom. Ali, ali, ali. Come on, guys. You got this. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, yes, Patrick. Come on. Animals. Yes. Come on. Come on. That was beautiful. That was perfectly executed. Nice, Tina. Oh, this is very too early. You came right. to me, Chris. And the other guys at the bottom of the hip, it was perfect. Holy shit. Oh. So good, guys. You beat Steve Alessandro. You beat uh, Nurse Daniel. Nurse Daniel's had a bad day today. He's a fantastic sprinter. But we've put him to the sword today. Right, Let's take our chances. He has us all the time on the flat. We have to have him where we can. He's too dangerous to be left alive. Well done, team. Some really good results today. Holy shit. I'm just crossing the line now in 1 minute 50. Do you reckon I'll get any points? Good job, guys. Come on, Layla, we'll, go, we'll ride to the finish. Well, I don't think I'll ever take, it'll ever take me an hour and six minutes to do 16k of Richmond again. Until next series, anyway. <laughs> Until next series. <laughs> well, great work, guys. If we're going to put, put uh, pick one to put on YouTube, this was a good one. I can see the title now and click ready. I did a race where finish time means nothing! Exclamation mark, <laughs> exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Yeah, I'm doing I'm going to beat Nurse, Nurse Alessandro to the finish. Yes, come on, come on, come on. Thanks to Jane, guys. I'll do the results. I'll do Jane, the results later, Jane. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Great work, everybody. Yeah, it was really good. Everybody goes deep. It's a really tough course, this one. It's a mixture of everything, isn't it? And that one minute climb is just uh, sure gets rid of all the uh, carbs left over in your body, that's for sure. So let's have a look at the results after I finished finally doing them on Zwift Power. It takes me ages to calculate them, not because it's difficult, just because I'm really, really lazy. So over in E category, which is the ladies only category, we can see that Tina Merheim absolutely smashed it. Uh, Sonia Foote from ATP Racing did really well as well. Joy Connolly and Kat Bain also did very, very well on the points front. Tina got three first places and a second place, so 100 points times three and 85 for a second, so 385. Fantastic score there. And I'm just going to draw your attention to 
uh, Tina's Strava. So we can have a look at this absolutely incredible run here where Tina got the Strava QOM for the 23rd Street segment on Zwift alongside second all-time QOM on the Monument Avenue Sprint and third all-time on the Broad Street Sprint. So absolutely incredible for Tina to do that against all the other women that have ever done that segment on Zwift. That's absolutely fantastic. And it shows how fast the lead-out train was, how well the team protected her, but also and mainly how strong Tina is. What an absolutely phenomenal performance. You will never see many results like that on Zwift, that's for sure. So we're going to enjoy it, take that one in, let Tina enjoy it because she is the queen of 23rd Street. And that gives Tina a pretty commanding lead in the league standings. She's in first place, pretty far ahead now. Cat Bane is in second place and we've got a couple of the ATP ladies just behind with Katie Candeloro in third place. So as we move over to D category, we can see that John Witt from ATP Racing did really well getting 375 points, followed closely behind by Pete Pipiel, uh, from also from ATP, with Jess and Layla just behind them, but still well ahead in the league standings in first and second. Over in C category, we can see that the Snow Guys took down the first three places. Absolute annihilation from them. Chris Wadrup scored very, very highly this week. And all three of those guys are at the top of the C League also, so doing really, really well against the might of ATP, Chad Hagen and Michael Hayward. With a big shout out to Andrew Matheson, who helped us on the lead outs today and last week. And as we move over to B category, we can see that once again, Joshua Eriksson destroyed the field and he scored nearly maximum points, 360. So he's flying away at the top of the B League standings ahead of Broseth and Matt Gay from ATP, who are strong competition. Are they strong enough to stop Josh? I don't know. Nobody was last season. Can he do it again? And finally, we head to A category where the big boys play and we can see that Steve D'Alessandro scored a phenomenal 375 points, followed closely by Patrick Karlstrom and Darren Humphrey. Just behind is Daniel Frasina from ATP as well. And it's going to be such a tight, tight battle at the top of that division because Daniel Frasina is currently winning, Patrick is just behind him with one event less and Steve D'Alessandro just behind him with another event less. So when those guys all get 10 events, it's going to be really, really close. I can't call it. Steve D'Alessandro is probably the man to beat at the minute, but well, Darren and Patrick showed him on the final sprint today, he can still be beaten. And he hurt back. Yeah. Now he's worried. You cut it. You hurt it. You see? You see? He's not a machine. He's a man. So great performance from Patrick and Darren. That 15 second sprint from Patrick is absolutely out of this world good. Both guys did really well on Libby Hill for that minute also. And I'm gonna be right up there for the battle for the title at the end of the season and see who gets the medals. And unlike most series on Zwift, it's not just virtual medals. We do do physical medals. So I send the medals to the podium places from each category uh, if virtual bragging rights weren't enough. So there you have it guys, a look into a totally different kind of race, something a bit different for you on the channel today to what we usually do. I hope you enjoyed it, got a look into what it's like to do a lead out, what it's like to be a sprinter. And remember, if you enjoyed this one, please give me a subscribe, like, comment. It really helps the YouTube algorithm for smaller channels. And I look forward to catching you on the next one. See you next time.